I want to take your attention to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, verse 35. And they're going to put it on the screens. The people stood watching, and even the leaders were scoffing. This is what they said. He saved others. Let him save himself if this is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came offering him sour wine and said, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription was above him, nailed to the cross. He said, This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal answered, rebuking him. Don't you even fear God? Since you're undergoing the same punishment. He went on to say, we're punished justly. Because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then the criminal takes his attention to Christ and he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then Jesus looks to the right. And from the cross he says to the criminal, Truly, I tell you, today, today, you will be with me in paradise. There are three people being crucified on this Friday. Though their crucifixion shared the same gruesome elements like the nails and hands and feet. That, that was the same for all three. The cross ripping into the flesh, and that was the same for all three. The nails that pierced their hands and feet, the thud of the cross as it hit the ground, all these were common experiences. However, the crosses that they bore were very different. Their final moments on these crosses speak loudly to us 2,000 years later. And so tonight I want to speak to you just for a moment about these three crosses. You don't hear much about the three crosses, but here's the fact. There were three. And, and rightly so, we hear about the center cross, the middle cross, Jesus on that cross, and rightly so. But tonight, I want to look at all three crosses. The first cross I want to look at is the, the cross on the left. This is the cross of rebellion. We just read it here about a criminal hanging on the cross on the left of Jesus. And we read about this cross, the cross of rebellion. This man's heart was hard. This man was a sinner. This man uh, had no remorse for what he did. In fact, we read about one of the last things he did. That was he cussed. The man in the middle. The Bible says, I just read it, he blasphemed Jesus. I often wonder about this man. The Bible tells us nothing about this man on the left. We don't know his backstory. We don't know what trauma he went through in his life. I, I, I wonder what his story was. I, what was his childhood like? Did he come from a broken home? Why was this man so angry? Why did this anger turn into bitterness? And why did this bitterness become staunch rebellion? 
I wonder, we're not told. I, I wonder, was, he, was, was, was his parents divorced? Was his home broken? Was he an orphan? Was he poor? Was he abused? What, what, what was going on in this man's life? That would make him so hard and so rebellious because here's the facts. I don't know the back story, but what I do know is in the last moments of his life, he's just feet from Jesus. All the things that happened to him, all the things he went through, I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is here when it counts and when it matters, he's just feet away listening to a message preached on the cross. By this middleman. Then what does he do? You know, let me tell you something. You can be really close to Jesus. You can hear all the words of the preacher. You can go to the same church services that everybody else goes to, yet be very far from him. Because here's the facts. Close does not cut it. And this criminal was very close to Jesus. He heard the words coming out of Christ's mouth like this. Father, forgive them as they were, as they were scoffing him and, at him and mocking him and beating him. They heard him open up his mouth and say, Father, forgive them. But it did not change the heart of this rebellious man. Feet away from the crucified Savior. He was saying, hey, hey, if you're Jesus, if you're the Messiah, rescue us. He wasn't speaking as a spiritual issue. He was talking about, get me off this cross. If you're who you say you are. But what he didn't realize is the greatest thing Jesus could do was to stay on the cross. Save yourself and us. That's, that, that's what the criminal cried. But he was speaking about a physical rescue. By Jesus staying on the cross, he was offering salvation to humanity. This man's heart did not grow soft. This man's heart on the left side grew harder and harder and harder. In fact, verse 39, it says that one of the criminals hanging there, this man, this man who hung on the cross of rebellion began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? The last, one of the last things this man did on the left side was cuss out the Savior. You say, well, I, 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 would, never, I, I would never do that. Well, here's the facts. We've all been this man on the left side. We weren't born a saint. We were born a sinner. We weren't, we weren't born saying, well, I want to receive Jesus. We were born saying, I don't need Jesus. We were born rejecting the need of a Savior. We hang on, hung on to the cross of rebellion. The, the, the good news is some of us have laid that cross down. But I'm telling you the sad news and the fact is there's many who take this cross of rebellion to the grave. Go into eternity hanging on to I'm right. Hanging on to I don't need a Jesus. And those people will spend eternity. Talk about remorse. Oh, there'll be much remorse in hell, but it'll be too late. This man held on to the cross of rebellion. But there were three crosses that day. Cross of rebellion. But on the right side, there was another cross. On the right side of Jesus, there was the cross of repentance. Once again, this man had the same nails going through his hands in the same way, going through his feet in the same way. He's hanging there on the cross the same way as the man on the left, as the man in the middle. But this man on the right bore a different cross than the man on the left and the man on the middle. This man 
was hanging on the cross of repentance. On the left, you've got the cross of rebellion. On the right, you've got the cross of repentance. This man was watching Jesus on the cross. He hears the people ridiculing him. He hears the people mocking him. He hears the insult slung at this man on the middle. He hears all the things that they did to him. They seen what they were doing to him. And then he heard the words coming out of the mouth of Christ. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Once again, I had to bring out this point. Both men heard the same message. Both men heard the same message from the same man, yet this man traded his cross of rebellion. I'm not saying he was innocent. In fact, he was guilty of the things he did. He deserved to hang on the cross. In fact, this is how I know this man was repentant because he said that on verse 41. Look what he said in verse 41. We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did, but this man has done nothing wrong. On the cross, he says, this is what he's saying, I'm a sinner. I deserve what I'm getting. But this man in the middle, he's not a sinner. This man in the middle, he's not a criminal. This man in the middle, he's done nothing wrong. He said, I get, I'm get, i getting what I deserve. But the man in the middle is, I don't know why he's here. I don't know exactly what he's doing. But I know there's something special about the man in the middle. Can anybody testify tonight and say, I know there's something special about the man in the middle. I'm I'm wrong, but he's never done anything wrong. We're sinners, the criminal says, but he's not. Oh, they were breaking this man on the right physically. But Jesus was breaking something on the inside of him spiritually. Jesus was doing something on something on they couldn't see on the inside of this man all they could see it was on the outside and he looked like the man on the left but they what they could not see was something was being ripped on the inside years of addiction years of bondage years of slavery to sin Year, things were falling off of this man things were being broken off of this man they could not see it they thought they were destroying the body on the outside but God was building something on the inside hanging the man on the middle can I remind you the man on the middle is the miracle worker the man on the middle hallelujah he can change the hearts of sinners the man on the middle I thank God for the man on the middle and this man on the right looks over to the man on the middle and you see this in paintings artists typically take the head of Jesus and when they paint a picture of Christ they paint it with his head turned towards the man on the right cross because there was a conversation being had the man on the right looks to Jesus Excuse me, sir. Mind you, Christ has been crucified just like these other men. He's feeling the pain just like these other men. He's struggling to breathe just like these other men. Fluid is building in his lungs just like these other men. It's getting harder for him to take a gasp of air just like these other men. Shock is setting in just like these other men. But when he hears Jesus always turns his head towards those who call out his name. Those who take attention and those who who lean towards him, he'll lean towards you. I'm something about the man in the middle. He could put a 
aside the pain he was going through. He could put aside the emotional pain of looking at his mother and his mother looking at him. He could put aside the pain of knowing, I'm doing this for them, but they don't get it. But then all of a sudden, here's a man who just tries to bring, raise himself up on the nails just enough to get oxygen into his lungs so he can say something to the man in the middle. And this is what he says. This is what he, he does know scripture. He, he's not been baptized. He's not been through seminary. He never went to vacation Bible school, but he heard a message from the man on the middle cross. He heard a message from the man on the, I'm, I'm making, I'm getting happy now. He heard a message from the man on the middle cross. He looks to the man in the middle. And this is what he said. Hey, when you come into your kingdom, I know I'm a nobody. I deserve what I'm getting. And nobody believes in me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody. I'm a failure. I'm hanging on this cross. My family could see me. You, you see, this was a spectacle was what crucifixion was. I'm a nobody. I burn all my bridges. I have nothing else to give anybody. I've wasted all my years of life. But I know there's something different about you. What do they call you? King, king of the Jews? I don't know. But I know there's something different about you, sir. And when you come into your kingdom... This man had never been through seminary. This man had, 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 as far as we know, had not been raised up in the synagogue. But what we do know is this man got a revelation of who Jesus was. He, he may have not knew his mama or his daddy or where he was from, but he had some type of revelation because he said, when you come into your kingdom, I want to tell you something. You don't have a kingdom unless you are a king. And he realized this man was not a pauper. He realized this man was not like him and not like the man on the left. He knew there was something different about this man in the middle. He said, king, when you get into your kingdom, will you remember me? And what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, Today, I hear you. I hear you. I see your faith. Today, you will be with me. Just like that. Just like that. And I want to tell you right now, you can, be, you can have lived years and years separated from God, years of living doing what you wanted to do. You may feel like you've burned every bridge. You may feel like nobody has confidence in you and everybody looks down on you. You may feel like you have the worst reputation in Waycross, Georgia. But can I tell you, in an instant, you can go from a criminal to one called out. You can go from darkness to marvelous light. You can go from a sinner to a saint. You can go from desperate to having every need met in your life. I'm telling you this, when you put your faith in the man on the middle, you can expect the miraculous in your life. But there's three crosses. I've talked about the cross of rebellion. I just talked about the cross of repentance. But I want to tell you about the third cross. The third cross was the cross of redemption. Ah, hallelujah. The cross of redemption. What is redemption? They're going to put it on the screen. What is redemption? Redemption is the act of regaining or gaining possession of something 
in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. Oh, hallelujah. I can't finish this message until I take you all the way back to the beginning of this book. And in the beginning of this book, there was a man named Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve had it just like they wanted it. They were living a life of, 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 uh, that was wonderful. Uh, the Bible says that, that God walked with them in the cool of the day. They walked and talked with God. Everything. You couldn't ask for anything better, but the Bible lets us in on something. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And when they sinned in the garden, sin entered into the world and entered into them. And because of that, everybody born and everybody includes you, everybody born from Adam and from Eve were born into sin. The bloodline got tainted. And what happened when they sinned in the garden, you can go back and read it. I'll just tell you what happened is when they sinned in the garden, they were separated from the presence of God. But I want to tell you from the very beginning, God has loved man. Man has been God's greatest creation. I want to tell you, angels were not are not above man. Man, man is God's greatest creation. And he loves man so much that he said, I got a plan. Even though, even though, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden I'm not writing them off I got a plan you say what was the plan the plan is found in John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever whoso, somebody look at your neighbor and say he's talking about me whosoever believes on him I don't care what you've done how long you've done it and how long you've been doing it I can tell you this whosoever means whosoever I don't care who you're mama and daddy was. I don't care how long you've been in addiction. I don't care how long you've been a cheater and a liar and a thief. Whosoever calls upon the name of the man in the middle shall be saved. But Jesus wasn't just, these men were dying on the cross. Jesus was dealing with death on the cross. Jesus was dealing with sin on the cross. Jesus was on the cross of redemption. Man lost possession of something that day. But God said, I'm about to redeem it. I'm about to give them back what they lost. You see, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So not only are we separated from God, but we're separated from God and the clock's ticking. And if we die separated from God, there is no hope. There is no, there's no, there's no purgatory. I don't care if you're Catholic, you're wrong. There is no purgatory. Every side of grace, every, every opportunity to make things right is on this side of eternity. I said on this side of eternity. Once your heart stops beating and you stop breathing and they take you to the funeral home, I'm telling you, it's over. It's too late. You're not in the funeral home either. I want to tell you that right now. You're not in the grave. I'm telling you that right now. When you step out of this side of eternity and walk through the door of, of, of the other, other side, it's either heaven or hell. It's too late to change. It's too late to make things right. And so when you die separated from God, you go to hell. That's what the Bible says. It's clear. So the clock was ticking. Payments due. God sent his son. The wages of sin is death. God sent his son to die to regain something for us. You see, he never lost it. That's the thing about the man in the middle. He's not doing this for himself. He's doing this for us. When he died on the cross, it paid the penalty, the fine for sin. See, on that cross, something was exchanged, his life for mine. 
And when he died on the cross, the wages of sin is death. God requires death for sin. When Jesus died on the cross, what he did, he didn't die as a single man. He died, he died to take care of a debt. But I want to tell you this. He was the first debt consolidator. Because what he did that day was he took your debt, my debt, their debt, her debt, his debt, all of our sin. You do, have, you do know you racked up some sin charges, right? And you racked up some sin debt, right? I'm not talking to people who's always been perfect in here. And if you think you have been, you're missing the message. You're not. You were born into sin and you racked up some charges that you didn't have the money to pay. I can remember there's an old saying, it's not politically correct, but it makes sense. You wrote a check, your butt can't cash. Help me, somebody. And But there is a man who's got more money than you got. He's got currency you don't know about, and it's his precious blood. And on that cross, he gave his life to die in our place. And the Bible says that he cleared our debt. When he died on the cross, we regained possession of something. Forgiveness. Joy, peace, purpose, salvation, opportunity to give our lives to him and to, to, to receive this forgiveness. And, and on the, when we place our faith in the man on the middle, what happens is he did it 2,000 years ago, but we have to place our faith in what he did. And in the, mo in the moment we place our faith in what he did, our debt is then cleared. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 this is, look what Paul said. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us. How did he do this? He did it like this. He took it away by nailing it to the cross. I want to tell you something. When Jesus was on that cross, I want to tell you it wasn't just Jesus. All my sin, all my lie, and everything I'd ever done was nailed with with Jesus on the cross and when Jesus died my sin was wiped out I'm telling you this is the greatest gift this is the greatest gift that one could ever receive but you must receive it Jesus did it but Jesus doing it doesn't make it real in your life until you receive what he did. See, this Friday is ordinary to some. But to believers who know their debt has been cleared, truly it is good Friday. It's not normal Friday. It's not, it's good Friday. I got a letter in the mail two days ago. My wife had gallbladder surgery a couple months ago. And our insurance paid a lot of it. But we were left with Almost $9,000 to pay. I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Somebody got to give now. Oh, Y'all better got all that gallbladder, every bit of it. <laughs> if, I find, if I find that you left a... We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna reduce that payment. I, I said, well, I'm going to write them a letter. They've done a good job. They were very nice. It was a wonderful experience. Well, I mean, for me, <laughs> Holly seemed to be in some pain, but for me, it was good. And I wrote them a letter and done this thing and said, I was, you know, I sent them how much we, or some paperwork on how much we make and all this. 
Didn't hear nothing from them. I think they sent us one letter and said, we need something else. I'm not sure. But this week, Holly called me and she said, I went to the post office box and I got the mail. You know, with women, it's like a, this story, you know, like, <laughs> I love women. But, you know, my mom is a woman. My grandmom is a woman. I, I ain't got nothing against women. But y'all are along with the story. You just, I went to the post office. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I got the mail, okay, and? And I, there was a letter in there, and? It was from the hospital. And I said this. I said, Holly, will you tell me, just tell me what the letter said. She said, what do you think it said? <laughs> I hate that. I, I don't know. I didn't know we were playing a game. Um, uh, let me phone a friend. Hey, Jason, what do you think the letter said? I said, if you don't just tell me, tell me what the letter said. She said, she said, I, then she said, I'll just read it to you. <laughs> Hello, Caleb and Holly. I just want to tell you, we, you know, she reads through the whole. But anyway, this is what it said. Your account has been paid in full. Oh, hallelujah. She said, I just, I just want to cry. I just want to cry. I said, not me. I said, I want to shout. I want to shout. I just want to shout. I want to tell you something. That's good news. But I got better news. I woke up this morning on Good Friday, and I was reminded that every every one of my sins has been paid in full, that all my sins have been forgiven. Everything I've ever done has been, is no longer remembered by God and I don't care what I done yesterday has been forgiven. What I done the day before that's been forgiven and I woke up this morning with new mercy. I'm telling you something. The man in the middle done a miracle for my life and he wants to do it for you today. I want to ask you something, though. We all hear the same message. You've heard the same word. It's available to you, but I want to ask you something. Which side are you on? You see, because you, I said, which side are you on? Because you can't be in the middle. There was only one man in the middle. It can't be you. It don't, he don't need you, but what side are you on? Because, see, you're either on this side, the side of rebellion, where you're still holding on to this thing. I'm right. I'm right. That Christianity stuff is, is for weak-minded people. I don't need that, you know, whatever. You're on, hanging on to this. You know what will take you, takes more people to hell than anything else? Not drugs. Not, not immorality. Not fornication. Pride. In fact, all of those things are birthed out of that thing. I'm right. Pride will take you to hell faster than anything else will. But pr pride will leave you at the door. Pride is, will be a terrible companion. Some of you are holding on to the cross of rebellion. But can I tell you, there's a cross of redemption. There is a cross of redemption. You can get off of this cross today. You don't have, listen, what I have to do, you gotta believe in the man on the middle cross. Help me somebody. You gotta believe on the man in the middle cross. What side are you on? Or today, would you say, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, and if I just feel like I'm on this cross, but I'm ready. I'm ready to change crosses. I'm ready to grab hold of the cross of repentance. You know what repentance means? It means this. Simply means this. I'm wrong. He's right. That's it. I'm, I'm wrong. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe in Jesus Christ and what he done for me. And I need, I, I receive, I need you, Lord. That's repentance. 
I can't do this life on my own. I thought I could. I tried, but I can't. That's repentance. I'm going to ask you. I want everybody to look at me real good. I'm talking to men. I'm talking to women. I'm talking to students. I'm asking you right now, which side are you on? Because, see, there's nobody in the middle. You're either on this side or that side. You can't be in the middle. Some people say, well, I'm kind of riding the middle. There there's no place for you in the middle. Well, I, I'm riding the fence. No, you're not. There's no place for you in the middle. You're either on the left or you're on the right. You're either right or you're wrong. Stand with me all across the building. You're not here by mistake. God don't make mistakes. But you do have to make your mind up. See, you have been led here today. You didn't just come here on your own. You know, I just, I, just, I just wanted to come today, find out what this is all about, or somebody invited me. No, God ordained you to be here. For you to make a choice. You got to make a choice. That's right. You say, well, I'm not making a choice tonight. Well, then you made a choice. Today is the day of salvation. Today you have an opportunity to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. To go from this side to this side. But you're going to have to step out. You see, everything that was done on this cross was done openly. It was an open spectacle. So when this, when this man cussed Jesus out, everybody heard it. When this man cried out to Jesus, everybody heard it. This man didn't care. This man didn't care. This man made noise. This man made noise. What are you saying? What are you doing? What choice are you going to make? Because whatever choice you make, it's out in the open. You say, well, no, nobody knows. Well, the one who knows, who matters knows. So if you hide it from the world... But he knows. And the whole world might as well know. Because the one that matters knows. I want you to bow your head and I want you to close your eyes. Father, I pray that you would draw the hurting and the broken. The hurting and the broken. The lost. Today is the day of salvation. Today, someone one can step out of darkness. Today, can step out. They're haunted by their past. They're 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 a criminal to their past. They're they're arrested by their past, and they burn all their bridges. They feel like they they they've made too many mistakes. They've messed up. They've done too much. But Lord, this message is, I believe, is. Your heart and your heart is saying, if they'll come to me, I won't turn them away. Father, draw them now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you feel the drawing of the Lord, if you feel like the Lord's dealing with you today, they're going to they're gonna sing a song in just a minute. But if you feel the Lord dealing with you, this is what we do. This is what we do in this church. And you may be new to this church. You may have never been here before, but I'm, I'm going to give you instruction now. If you feel God dealing with you and you know you've been hanging on to the cross of rebellion, but you're ready to grab hold of the cross of repentance, all God wants from you is faith. But once again, I told you everything these men did on the cross, they done it openly. And I want you lived in sin openly. This man rebelled openly. This man repented openly. You don't have to confess your sins to me because I'm not the one doing the forgiving. 
In fact, you don't even have to confess. You don't have time to confess all your sins to the Lord. You can't even remember all your sins. This is what you're confessing today. I'm a sinner. I believe you're the Savior. And I'm going to ask you tonight, if you are ready to make that decision, you feel the Lord drawing you, I'm going to ask you to step out from where you're at, from the seat that you're in. You may be right in the middle of, of an aisle. They'll move. This is the only, this is the reason why we came. This is what this is all about. Making a big deal about Jesus and glorifying God. And there's no greater way to glorify God and to make a big deal about what Jesus done than to surrender and give your life to him. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it right now. If you feel the Lord drawing you and dealing with you, I'm going to ask you to step out from where you're at and come down to the front. Okay? Are you ready? Let's do it. Sing it, guys. As they sing, you come. Come on. Watch out. You still got time. Come on, if you feel the Lord drawing, you step out from where you're at. Pick up the cross of repentance. Let's worship the Lord.
Hallelujah. I want you to look at me right now, everyone standing here. Jesus loves you so much. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And to, tonight, we're going to place our faith, all of our faith in Christ, and what he's done for us. We're going to do that through praying, talking to him. That's what it is. That's what prayer is, talking to him. What you're going to say is, and you're going to repeat after me, but what you're saying is, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need you. That's basically what we're saying. And I trust you're the Savior. Okay? And everybody's going to pray this together. And we're going to pray it out loud. There's nothing to be ashamed of. We're going to pray it out loud. It's pleasing in the ears of God. You ready? Let's say it. Let's repeat after me. Say, Lord, here I am. Forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. But I believe you're the Savior. And I surrender my life to you. I believe you died on the cross to pay for my sin. And I believe you rose again. I receive your mercy. Your forgiveness, your love, and your grace. And tonight, I know I am saved. I am forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.